Uh, our, next, uh, our next speaker part, uh, uh, is a long ways partner who uh, joined the business because he was made redundant, which is a very good reason. We should still be looking for people like that. And it's Steve, it's Steve and Debbie. Debbie was a hairdresser. She's no longer a hairdresser, I might add. They joined in 1999, and I've been up here quite a few times. They're a smashing couple. They really are. Very popular cleans the couple. And uh, best best uh, income, a thousand pound a week. Would you like that? Well, you better get the note papers ready. <laughs> Special achievements and the conferences. I mean, it's like uh, going along to your local travel centre when you see some of these things read about. Monaco twice, Cairns, Athens, Sydney, Budapest. That's fantastic, isn't it? Do you think this guy's going to be worth listening to? Well, he's an exceptional first half and it's going to be an exceptional second half as well. Big warm welcome for Steve Roper. Thank you. To say I've got some pretty tough acts to uh, to follow, and I'm, I'm just a warm warm up act for for John late, late, later on. But um, with Alison and Stuart's uh, and, and Michael's uh, talks earlier, I, just, I, I don't know really, I don't know how I'm going to complete with that. But um, so let's just uh, have a have a look at this because look, this is me that's speaking, but it's very much a partnership between uh, Debbie and I. Debbie tends not to be the front man but she certainly um, contributes massively to our business. Um, so, um, yeah, a bit of sex education. I didn't know what to call it, but you'll see why it's <laughs> called sex education uh, in due course. Should I stand over here? Yeah, everyone on that side says yes. Everyone on this side says no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, just want to highlight the fact that people may doubt what you say, but they... they will believe what you do. And, and everything in the clean, easy business is very visible, isn't it? You know, various uplines are publishing figures, the company publishes figures, there's, no, there's nowhere to hide. So um, we, n we need to be sort of leading by example and, uh, and showing people what is available with, with clean, easy as well. So um, let's just have a look at one or two things that, that we have done. Um, Jim touched on this in the presentation, but the thing that struck me with a lot, a lot of these trips that we've been on with Clean Easy, they're what most people would consider to be a holiday of a lifetime. And we've had 10 so far. So, um, and we're not 700 years old. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, they, they, some of these experiences have just, have just been awesome, you know. And, and the, other th the other great thing with some of these trips is that you do things that you wouldn't necessarily want to do, but, 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 but because it's available, <laughs> or you don't think you want to do it, but because it's available, I mean, the, the safari thing, that didn't, well, that was a safari-type holiday, albeit that's not the safari picture, but uh, th this was in South Africa, and that, if you can't see that, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, that's Deb cuddling a lion cub. Um, but um, that didn't particularly appeal to us, but I have to say it was one of the most fantastic experiences to go on the safari and the, and the lion cub thing and all that. That was just brilliant. That started off with us going to this uh, lion um, sanctuary or whatever you call it, and they just opened the cage with all these lions in. And I mean, we're talking about, I know they're only lion cubs, but they are about the size of an Alsatian. <laughs> and, and then they say, in you come. <laughs> Bizarre. So you can see there, that's, uh, si si that's on top of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Deb didn't like that idea of going up there. Um, but, you know, iconic places with the uh, Opera House in the background. That, that was, um, is that a pointer? Yeah. That was more recently in um, New York, flying over the Hudson in a helicopter. This I never thought I'd see, Deb holding an alligator. That was just, um, when was that? Last November in, uh, in Miami. Um, that's on top of the Empire State Building the, the year before, Mauritius. That's, that suited me, that holiday. That, that suited me down on the ground. That was stood on the threshold of our bedroom. And that's the, the beach and then the, and then the sea, straight out to the Indian Ocean. So we could lay in bed. On there, we had the, um, the uh, 
oh, what do you call it? There's the patio doors, and then you had slide-in shuttered doors as well. So at night you could sh shut the shutters and have the patio doors open. You could just hear the the Indian Ocean lapping up against the uh, on the beach. It's brilliant. And that was our first big conference in Cairns. So we've had some 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 good trips, and th this is all all that's available with Clean Easy, and it's just just amazing. And and getting the car as well. So only in Clean Easy. I don't know of any other opportunity or any other <coughs> career choice that you could make that would give you this just as a sort of, that's just bunts on top of the money that you can earn. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So <coughs> I've just, just went back over uh, the last three years as to our personal sponsoring figures because I thought I'd check it because for ever since we've been in the business, we've been saying we sponsor about one a week. Um, and, and we have. And for the past um, three years, I, I could easily check the figures, so I put these up here. But it's always been about one a week. Well, t in 2010, we sponsored 51 people, so nearly one a week. And they were all business builders. In 2011, which I guess is when the break free was introduced, we sponsored 89, of which 46 were business builders. 2012, we sponsored 99, of which 51 were business builders. So we always took the, the business builders as, as the benchmark and the break, break free, bringing people in and break free were always extras. Um, and then in 2013, when, we, when I put this together, which was a couple of weeks ago, this was up until the end of period three, we'd sponsored 24. And in, peri in period four, which for us has just finished, we sponsored 11, of which nine were business builders. So um, we are actively sponsoring, and that's really what um, I wanted to sort of let you know, that we are out there uh, doing it ourselves. So would you like to learn how to sponsor some more? Yeah. I don't know if there's many people here that are sponsoring more than that. There are some people sponsoring more than we do, but our... Um, the thing that we have done is we've been in the business now for 13 years and we've done that every single year for those 13 years. So we are consistent and I know that that's a major challenge for a lot, a lot of people. So if we could show you how to be consistent <coughs> and maybe increase the ratio of business builders, um, because I, I think that um, whichever kit people join with, um, it's up to the, the person that joins as to what they make of it. That's that's for sure. So it doesn't matter what kit someone joins with; it's what they do with it that matters. But I am a firm believer that joining with break, uh, joining with 250 catalogs, 99 times out of 100 is the right way to go. Um, having said that, I actually sponsored somebody last night on a on a on a break free. But there, that was that was an interesting conversation because there was a very specific reason for sponsoring them on, on a break free and it wasn't to do with the cost. But um, anyway, so who would like to increase their ratio of business builders? Okay, and who would like to learn how to be more consistent? And who doesn't care? <laughs> Who'd like to qualify for Dubai? And what I would say is if, if you are thinking, well, I'm a million miles from qualifying for Dubai in, at the moment. Well, maybe you're right, I don't know. But the time to start aiming to qualify for the conference that comes after Dubai, wherever that may be, the time to start qualifying for that, start, start working to qualify for that, is right now. Get some momentum going. And then you, I mean, we have had uh, conferences launched where you just know you're going because you've got everything just about to tip over the edge. You tip, out, tip it over the edge and you're qualified. So you can get into that position. So even if you, you're, you're thinking, well, Dubai is a bit ambitious right now, um, get yourself lined up for whatever comes in 2014. So if I could show you how to do some of that, would that be good? <laughs> good, I'm in the right room. Right, so who can remember everything that they see and hear? Good, that's the right answer, no answer. So is it easy to take notes? And is it even, even easier to not take notes? Because one of the things that I think sorts, uh, differentiates the leaders is that they do the things that are easy to do. 
and other people don't do the things that are easy to do. The leaders in this business don't do the things that are hard to do. They do the things that are easy to do consistently. And one of the things that is easy to do is to take notes. And I would recommend that everybody takes notes. If you come along today and you haven't got the facilities for taking notes, you haven't got your pen, pen and paper with you, you're not going to be taking notes, I guess. But for goodness sake, next time, just think, well, the one thing I can do to differentiate myself from everybody else that doesn't take notes is to take notes. Because then you're going to be able to maybe not remember everything, but you will be able to recall everything when you go back over your notes. Okay? So that is a, a theme throughout this, that it's easy to do, um, it's easy to do the things that are, that are easy to do. I, you, haven't got to, you haven't got to do anything special, but it's even easier to not do them, and, and that's what we've got to be wary of. So, who is satisfied with their progress in Clean Easy so far? Some, but not many. And, you know, we've had some success, but I'm not satisfied with it. I'd like to have a lot more success. So who wants to prog progress faster? And who can we rely on to get faster progress? Just look in the mirror. The only, p the only people we can really rely on is, is ourselves. So we value everyone, but we, can we just rely on ourselves. So it's, it's up to us. And if we, um, if we decide that we're going to achieve something, if we decide that we can do it, we've seen um, fantastic presentations from... from Stuart and, um, and Alison today, as well as Michael, but that's not so relevant in terms of this, but in terms of, in terms of their story and their achievements, that they, they, have, they have led the way. And anybody can do what they have done. Anybody can make that decision. I decided to be director of network, of network development, and they wouldn't let me, so they, Michael got the job. But... Um, we, we can't decide to, to, to have Michael's position, but we can all decide to have Alison's position or, or Stuart's position or any other distributor's position. Does that make sense? So um, we, we decide. We're all clean, easy, independent distributors with the emphasis on independent. We're not dependent, are we? It doesn't say clean, easy, dependent distributor. We're independent so we have to stand on our own two feet, okay? <coughs> Who here is a clean, easy distributor? Who here isn't? Okay, some, some, s s some not. Okay, and who here is a clean, easy leader? Because every distributor that put their hand up can put their hand up in terms of the question, are you a, if you're a clean, easy distributor, you can be a clean, easy leader. And the definition is, is what you how you decide to lead people. If you start sponsoring people and you've got one person in your team, who is leading that one person? Who is the most influential person in terms of leading that new joiner? It's you, isn't it? So if, there's only one, if you've only got one person in your team, you are a leader. And the important thing is that if you don't lead them right, they are a lot less likely to be successful. So we've got a responsibility to, to do the right thing. So um, we, we do need to lead by example, and we need to lead and coach and, and help and support people. Great leaders start off as great followers. And, and I think this is, this is sort of fairly fundamental to, to, to what I'm talking about today, because... Um, when we joined the business, we joined with an attitude of we'd been along to various, well, we'd been along to our local opportunity meeting, um, and we'd met some very successful distributors, including uh, Bob Webb, Clean Easy's number one distributor, including our sponsors, Andy and Claire Stevenson. Um, <coughs> and we'd seen a, a huge amount of success in the network. So we knew that the business worked. So if we failed, it was us that was failing, not the business. Does that make sense? So, so we took the decision to join <coughs> quite seriously because we didn't want to let ourselves down and, and fail. So when we joined, we, we took the attitude, we have to make this work. And, and we figured that the best way to make it work was just to follow in the footsteps of those that were doing it. So just grab hold of the coattails of the successful 
person in your upline or successful people in your upline and hang on and, and do what they recommend and follow their system. Now we've got people from various groups here today and there are different systems. So, so far as I can, I've not made this system biased at all because the important thing is that you work, the most important system to work is your uplines. Okay, so start off by following your, your, upline, your upline system. So we've got here um, two businesses, both doing fundamentally the same things, selling salmonella, sorry, burgers. <laughs> okay, so we've got, we've got the salmonella van at the side of the road and we've got McDonald's, both selling burgers, both making money and both owner-occupied, gen uh, owner-operated generally. Okay, so I would suggest that one is sort of moderately successful and one is massively successful. So what's the difference? The system, isn't it? It's, 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 it's the system, that's, that's the big thing that's, that's different with those two businesses. And I would suggest that the actual food that comes out of there is probably a lot better than the food that comes out of there, personally. But um, they've got a proven system, absolutely proven system. Now, would you prefer moderate success or massive success? It's, there's only one answer to that, isn't there? Why, why wouldn't you have massive success? Now, does the McDonald's system work? <coughs> Clearly it works. And does the Burger King system work? Clearly the Burger King system works. But would the McDonald's system work in a, in a burger restaurant, in a, in a, in a Burger King? It wouldn't, you can't, you can't mix it. And, and I've, I've, I see so many times people in Clean Easy looking at one person or one group that's doing really big, you know, having, having great success and think, oh, I better go and follow their system. It fund it's fundamentally wrong. You need to follow the system of your successful upline. Because if you, if you, if you go and change the system to what somebody else is doing, you're effectively running, running a Burger King system in, in a McDonald's. And it, it's fundamentally wrong. And, and for every per everybody that you look at that is working one particular system and they have some success and then a year or two later you see the other system have some success. It, it's, it's doing this all the while. So I honestly don't think that there's one system in Clean Easy that is massively better than any other. It's just important that we stick to that, okay? Leaders do not reinvent the wheel. We tend to find that round ones work best. To understand the benefits of the system, we're, we're, it's not strictly speaking a franchise, is it, the clean, easy business, but we know that the franchise system works and, and the proven systems work. So just uh, stick to the system. Recognize the best system is, is, is your uplines. Apply that system, lead by example. So you're gonna follow, if you like, follow the system, which in turn is leading by example. And then promote the system, okay? I think that's uh, a fundamental. So what's the difference between this guy on the left and these people on the right? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> They've got the same, got the same kit, same catalogue, same company, same 24 hours in, in a day. They've got the same opportunity. You know, we all start with the same kit. The only difference is different priorities. So we need to identify what our priorities are. So my tip one is this, is, this is number one of the six. I couldn't think of a better reason, so I called it that. So, so we've got s six tips, and my number one tip is to find, find your reason. And, and it, it, it underpins everything, and, and if we can't find our reason, if we can't really get something that hurts if you don't it, it needs to hurt if you don't achieve achieve as well you know so something that you really desperately want okay so find your reason because that's that's the difference between this guy and these guys is find, finding a reason so so there's there's lots of um there's lots of trainings on that sp specifically. There's lots of um, books and audios and stuff like that that are available to, to help us. 
Um, and in actual fact, um, Michael's book is quite different to any other book that um, I've read. Deb's read it, I've read it, and, and it, a lot of that is about finding your reason and, and things that has happened to Michael and, and how it, it's helped him. So I found that a really interesting read and, and quite contrasting to lots of other books on the subject. So you might want to take, take a look at that as, as one. The other one is uh, Jim Rohn's, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the book. Sorry? <coughs> Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness. That's another great book on, um, on the goal setting. Okay. Look at life through the windshield, not the rear view mirror. Now, um, if, you've, if you've had, well, I, I asked earlier about who's, who's had the progress that they want in Clean Easy. Well, if you haven't had the progress that you, that you want in Clean Easy, it doesn't mean to say that you can't have the progress. Don't look back at what, what you haven't achieved. Look forward at what is available to you. Okay, that's, that's really the point I'm making there. And, and I think with the changes that we're, we know is going to happen on, I think it's the 11th of May. <laughs> um, with, the, with the changes that we're going to hear about on the 11th of May, you know, we can all t take advantage of those and just look, look forward and, and carve out our own, um, our own future. But focus on productive activities. Um, and this, for those that can't read it, uh, from, from where you are maybe, it's, it's time for my monthly report. What's a productive way of saying I surfed the web and hung out in chat rooms? Now, you can, s you can do a lot of lead generation on the internet, <coughs> we do, but you've got to, um, what happened there? You've got to um, not, the point I'm making with that really is don't kid yourself if you're playing on Facebook and Twitter and, th and that sort of stuff. If you're actively generating leads on there, that's fine. But other than that, don't kid yourself that you're working if you're just doing some social stuff on there. There's some, there's some value in social stuff for, for so <laughs> social evidence and all the rest of it. But the point is just focus on productive stuff. And I'm going to assume that everybody retails at least to the 10% level. Um, or maybe your upline advises more than that. So de depending. So, second tip is make a plan and commit to it. It's the commitment that, that makes it makes the difference. Not, not, the, not the plan. You can have a quite a modest plan, but if you commit to it, it will be far more powerful than having the most fantastic plan where you're going to set the world alight. Um, and if you don't commit to it, it's, it's not worth the paper it's written on. So c commit to your plan. So what's your commitment level? Is it like that of the chicken or that, like that of the pig? Because <laughs> on that, I would say that the pig was a lot more committed. <laughs> and, and the point is, you c you've, to my mind, there's, there's only one commitment level. Either you're committed 100% or you're not committed. So you've got to commit 100%. So my third tip is commit 15 minutes to lead generation every single day. Now, is there anybody here that hasn't got 15 minutes where they... I mean, Alice, was it Alison or... No, Stuart was saying, talking about stealing time. Yeah. Stealing time. To steal time from somewhere. Is there anybody that feels they couldn't steal 15 minutes a day to generate some leads? Okay, so that, that's, that's my tip, um, my third tip. Commit to um, generating, uh, uh, commit to 15 minutes every day. I emphasize every day. That, that's what I would suggest you do. If you said, right, I'm going to do it for five days a week or six days a week, that's, that's fine. But if you say you're going to do it for six days a week, do it for six days every week. So make that plan and commit to it. <coughs> I'm talking 15 minutes. That's a minimum. It's up to you if you do more. And you know what? When you're doing 15 minutes, how you commit to 15 minutes. That's easy to do, isn't it? Everybody can do that, can't they? Say yes, Steve. <laughs> if anybody says, if anybody wants to say no, say no, Steve. 
Right, so everybody here is going to commit 15 minutes, and there's how many of us here? 60? 70? So that's a fair few hours every day generating leads. That's going to make a difference. Okay, and when you're doing 15 minutes, you know what? You do half an hour or whatever. But I'm not asking you to commit to half an hour. Commit to the 15 minutes. So who's thinking, well, I can't do it today. I'm here. Anybody? Can't do it today. I'm here. Well, that still leaves you 19 hours a day. 19 hours today. Okay, so, um, you know, we, we can do that 15 minutes on the way home. We can do that 15 minutes maybe when we get home with certain things. So, okay. My fourth tip is to commit another 15 minutes to phone calls every day. Maybe appointment, depending on how you work. But if, if, you're, if you're working appointment system as opposed to information sending out, either way, you've got to make some phone calls, haven't you? So I'm suggesting that you spend 15 minutes <coughs> making phone calls every day. So, and I think that's the last of the time I'm asking you to commit to. So I'm asking you to commit to a total of half an hour, maybe over and above what you're doing now. Is that doable? Because, yeah. I mean, ev everybody that's here, everybody that's given up their, their Saturday to be here today is obviously fairly, fairly serious about their business. And I just think that if you commit to, to that extra half an hour a day, every single day without exception, you're going you're gonna to put yourself in the top 1% of clean energy distributors. Because you're everybody, uh, our, our previous uh, two network speakers have, have said about being consistent. It's, it's a major issue. And the reason it's a major issue is because it, it, it forms your habits, it forms your thinking. So if, if you are consistent with this stuff, it will transform <coughs> your business. I, I honestly think that. And I, and, and I am sort of, um, uh, you know, practicing practicing what I, what I preach. And, and for for our first, certainly for our first few years, five years or whatever it was to get to SED, we had a very specific plan, um, and and we stuck to it absolutely rigidly. And for the f and for the first five years, not one week went by. We we tended to work a weekly plan for the activity. Not one week went by, including Christmas week and that, when we didn't achieve it. Okay? Um, yeah, so what's your commitment level? It's just, a, you know, you, you can wish for something or you can commit to something. And there's all these other things in between. But j uh, just c try committing to a very modest plan. If you commit to that modest plan, it will make a huge difference. Okay? So... Is there anybody here that could lend me £10,000 by this time next week? Please. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking for a show of hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yet, you're not. Not, not yet. Not, yeah, yeah. You're not going to lend me £10,000 by this time next week. So John could, but he, he's not going to. I have actually got 10 million quid myself. I've got 10 million quid, it's tied up in the bank, but I can't access that for three months. It's just tied up. So if you could lend me 10 grand in a week's time so that a dreadfully ill child that we know and love can have a life-saving operation, then in three months' time, I will pay you a million quid. Who could lend me 10 grand by this time next week? I know you don't care about that little child that we love, but, <laughs> but a million quid. <laughs> a million quid. You'd do it for a million quid, wouldn't you? So if you could find 10 grand by this time next week, do you know of anybody in Western Europe that couldn't possibly find 35 quid? And I, and, and I, and I think if, if we get in the mindset of... Everybody in Western Europe, I don't care where they come from, every single man, dog and his child could, could find 35 quid to get started with a 250 kit. I know there's people in this room that, that didn't, but I think that if we get in that mindset <laughs> and, we uh, and we believe that everybody can, we will get better at putting across why everybody should. And since we've had this, and I don't know what the difference is between 50 quid as it was, 
or 49.99 as it was up until a couple of weeks ago and then it's gone to 35 pound i have i've as you've seen from the previous uh, sponsoring figures we've we've sponsored constantly with business builders and the break freeze have tended to be extra ones <coughs> that we wouldn't otherwise have got in so i've always been open minded about about sponsoring with sponsoring with both but i'm just finding now that now we've got 35 pounds i'm as i'm talking to prospects i haven't sort of sat down and consciously thought about this i'm just feeling as i'm talking to prospects if you haven't got the resource if, if you're not resourceful enough to find 35 pounds are you resourceful enough to do anything with a break free kit so i'm i'm, I'm <coughs> not sponsoring on break free hardly, hardly at all now so so where it's been 50 50 Last month, when half of which we had this offer on it, our ratio was two to two to nine, two break freeze to nine um, business builders. So, if we can get that mindset, I think we'll 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 change our um, our, our ratios. So, does anybody think that has anybody that really really can't find thirty five quid? Because I don't care, you know, if you believe you can, you, you, you'd sell something to find it. So, tip five, communicate with your upline and your team frequently. Um, emails, phone, text, easy reach, and, and the events. Because visibility um, with your upline will really draw your attention uh, to them, and your upline can, can help you enormously if they know you. So we, we need to get known by our upline and then we need to get to know our team members. So that, that frequency of communication, I think, is so important. Not long, drawn-out communication, but just frequent, short, sharp communication, just whether it's good news, bad news, questions, what, what answers, whatever it is. So I think communication is seriously misunderstood in, in Clean Easy because I desperately like to have a lot more communication f from our team members. Uh, yeah? <laughs> and your upline wants to hear from you. And if your upline doesn't want to hear from you, their upline does. <laughs> so that's uh, tip five. Communicate with your, your upline and team frequently. Okay. Who here knows it all? Tip six, if you want progress, you have to get into this personal development stuff. And if you, and if you, and if you want to qualify for the overseas conferences, you've got to promote Michael's book. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've, 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 already, I've already mentioned Michael's book, it, and, and, it, and it, is, it, is a, it is quite different, and it is very good. And then... That is a, a, a similar book to what Alison was talking about in, 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 in a lot of respects. She was talking about, um, oh, sorry? Go for no, go for no, yeah. Go for no and the slight edge, there, there's, there's a lot of similarities there. So um, the, the slight edge is, I think, the slight edge and the go for no is, is are both very much about developing consistency. So, um, but you, 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 if you, if you want to progress, you have to. It, it's, it's not optional. You have to get into personal development. You know, it's, it's optional whether or not you want to progress. That's entirely everyone's choice. But if you want to progress, you have to get into the personal development, one way or another. And I think um, the fact that everybody is here today, for the, for the people that are here, I'm preaching to the converted anyway. Okay. So we spoke about, I, I, I asked you earlier, who'd like to s sponsor some more? So 15 minutes a day of lead generation and 15 minutes a day of um, making phone calls to prospects and communicating with your upline. Do you think that that would help you with to sponsor more? Say yes, Steve. Yes, Steve. Yep, this is the interactive bit. And who would like to increase the ratio of business builders to break freeze? And believe, we need to believe that everybody's got 35 quid. 
Okay? So that would help you to increase your ratios, wouldn't it? And who would like to learn how to be more consistent? Do 15 minutes a day. That's going to make, that, that's going to completely transform your consistency if you just do 15 minutes a day, whether you like it or not. Um, and, and do you know the, the time that you can differentiate yourself from, from everybody else is to do it when you really don't want to? Because average people don't do it when they don't want to. The leaders will do it even when they don't want to. So 15 minutes a day. So you've only got to do it for 15 minutes a day, even when you don't want to. Uh, and get into the personal development and do things that are easy not to do. Did I say that right? Do things that are easy to not do. Yeah, lots of things are easy to, to do or not to do. You, we just got to do the stuff that's easy, but consistently. And then commit. That's a big one as well. But we can do all of those things, can't we? Is, is there anybody, does anybody think I'm, I'm out of touch here? I'm not asking anybody to do or suggesting anybody does anything that is particularly challenging, am I? And who'd like to qualify for Dubai? Or 2014? Identify your priorities, and it may or may not be the overseas conferences, but if you qualify for the overseas conferences, you're, you're qualifying for it, or you're you're achieving a whole lot more as well. So follow and promote the system and take the initiative. We're independent distributors. So we, we, it's up to us to, to take that initiative. Oh, and promote Michael's book. <laughs> so courage is not a lack of fear, but it's the abili ability to act when facing fear. Okay? And a lot of us are maybe uncomfortable with making the phone calls or maybe uncomfortable doing uh, appointments or, or wh whatever way you work if you're uncomfortable with it if you f if, if you're a bit fearful of it do it anyway there's another book isn't there feel the fear and do it anyway another good book so courage is not a lack of fear but the ability to act while facing fear so go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life that you've imagined because Clean Easy does enable us to, to set our own destiny. And I hope, you really, really hope that you do apply at least some of what, what I've suggested and, and, and indeed the other speakers today. So I hope that's been of uh, some use. I'll hand you back to your MC. Thank you.